Imagine babies grown in labs. It sounds like a sci-fi cliché. But a groundbreaking team of experts across Europe are hoping to build the world's first clinically approved artificial womb in order to save the lives of babies born prematurely. With nearly a million dying every year, the race is on. Time is really of the essence because we quickly have to provide the infant with oxygen. James was born at exactly 24 weeks. He was really very, very tiny. When he got my pinky fingernail, it was with his whole hand. In 2012, Sonna's son James was born prematurely. And like many premature babies, he was put in an incubator. The doctors told us his chance of surviving was 50%. An incubator is a very hostile environment. Tragically, James died two months later. While incubators save many lives, half of those born at 24 weeks do not survive in incubators. This is partly because their lungs aren't yet sufficiently formed to breathe air. An environment more similar to the womb is, I think, the best solution we wish to help the parents and children who came after us. And that's exactly what Sonna is now trying to do. Since 2020, Sonna has been an advisory board member to an elite team of scientists and engineers. They're taking on an extraordinary challenge, constructing an artificial womb. What we really need is a liquid-filled environment that protects the baby from air, that would be a wish come true. Welcome, and uh, I think we can start the program according to the agenda, which is now on the... Professor Franz van der Vosse leads the team hoping to make that wish a reality. The part of our work package is to find alternatives for the birth procedure. Coordinated by the Eindhoven University of Technology in the Netherlands, the approach is innovative. It's as much mathematical as medical. My background is, is, is not in uh, medical uh, sciences. My background is in physics. How does our oxygenator work? The 29 strong team includes global experts in computational modeling and industrial design, as well as pregnancy and childbirth. The main challenge here is that the liquid filled chambers layer is not conductive. And in this unique group, each collaborator has different skills. They are united by the goal of designing and building a womb that replicates the conditions inside a real one. Good modelling is the key to success here. We predict the weather by making a model of the stratosphere by using mathematical models. We want to predict what will happen, in this case, for the cardiovascular system of the baby inside the womb of the mother. Other projects in this field are testing by placing baby animals, such as lambs, in bags of liquid. But this EU-funded team is using a very different beast, silicone rubber. We can hopefully postpone animal experiments for a while by making mannequins that help us to mimic and simulate like a flight simulator what is happening in the system. Juliette von Haaren is in charge of designing the mannequins. You see basically the range of motions that we can achieve using these flexures and the motors that we have embedded in our uh, mannequin. What I find very interesting about this project is that it is at the intersection of art, design um, and biology, engineering. One of the big challenges of this project is finding a way to safely transfer the fetus from the mother to the artificial womb. But the team believe they have found an answer, a liquid tunnel. So the infant moves from liquid into liquid. Once the baby is inside the liquid tunnel, the umbilical cord can be cut. Then, after the baby reaches the artificial womb, things get even more challenging. The umbilical cord has to be quickly reattached, this time to an artificial placenta. If this takes more than a few minutes, lack of oxygen will damage the baby's brain. 
If all goes smoothly, the baby will spend the next four weeks receiving all its required oxygen and nutrients through the artificial placenta and womb. The hope is that more premature babies will survive in these liquid-filled polymer bags. Compared with being in an incubator, it should be easier for their lungs to grow enough to be able to breathe air. Weeks later, when the baby is around 28 weeks, they can be safely placed in an incubator before being finally released to their parents' care. But to build a fully functioning artificial womb, the team has to overcome other potentially fatal risks, not least blood clotting. The main problems we have now is blood tends to coagulate if it comes in contact with materials that are not owned by the body itself. With so many obstacles to overcome, it could be at least a decade before this technology is rolled out to make a difference in the world. What's more, it won't be cheap initially. And what about dystopian fears of opening the door to growing babies entirely outside the human womb? The team are adamant that their technology cannot be used in this way. The idea that you could use maybe the system from the start to the end. The technology is not suitable for earlier situations. We want to save children and that's the goal of the project. Hello, I'm Tom Standage, Deputy Editor at The Economist. If you'd like to learn more about this topic, click on the link opposite. And if you'd like to watch more of our Now and Next series, click on the other link. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.